So our next topic is the preparation of amines. And again, anything that has the asterisk indicates old chemistry. So these are things that you are already familiar with. So our first route is through nucleophilic substitution. Uh, remember that one of the potential issues with this is that you can have multiple alkylations. One of the ways that you can kind of avoid that is to put in a large excess of ammonia. So then you have much less of your uh, alkyl halide. And you also do have to have an excess of the ammonia anyway, because once you get to the intermediate here, you're going to have to bring in another equivalent of the ammonia in order to pick up a proton off of here. So that's actually how you end up with this here. Um, so you end up making ammonium out of this ammonia. You can also do this with an alpha halo acid, which is something we learned about back in chapter 18, where if you add in an excess of ammonia, in this case, we're talking about a 70 to one excess, which is pretty crazy. Um, but remember, you're going to have, your, your first reaction here is going to be between the ammonia and the acid. And then you're gonna to have to have more ammonia to come in and actually displace the bromine. And then you'll have to have more ammonia to come in and deprotonate this part of the amine, but it's doable. And you can also alkylate a tertiary amine. So if you have something like triethylamine and you want it to have another methyl group on it or something, you can add in an alkyl halide and through an SN2 reaction, you'll end up with a quaternary ammonium. So some new chemistry in this chapter uh, would be that you can actually use azide in order to create amines. Um, this is a good way to create a primary amine. So if you have a primary alkyl halide and then you have your azide ion, which is a good nucleophile, it can come in and displace the halogen. And I have an alkyl azide, which through reduction with lithium aluminum hydride can be turned into a primary amine. You have to be careful with alkyl azides, though they are explosive. Um, and sodium azide, which is a good source of the azide ion, is actually used in automotive airbags. That's actually part of what initiates the reaction that puffs out the airbag. And you've maybe seen an airbag come out before, but it's very fast, very scary, and that's one of those explosive reactions there. Uh, you can also prepare aromatic amines through the reduction of nitro compounds. Again, this is repeat information from the aromatic chemistry chapter. So you can take benzene, uh, which is what they're saying here with AR-H, uh, and react with nitric acid and fuming sulfuric acid, and you can create nitrobenzene, which through reduction with um, specific reduction reagents will give you amines. So a generalized reaction here would be that you can take a um, aromatic compound featuring a nitro group, react it with hydrogen in the presence of some catalyst, um, or you can do it with iron and hydrochloric acid followed by base, and you would get um, your amine. Uh, a specific example is that you can take nitrobenzene, react it with iron and hydrochloric acid followed up by hydroxide, and create aniline. Uh, this is also repeat. Um, we're going to talk about reductive amination. So you can take an aldehyde or a ketone, react it with a primary, secondary, or sorry, you can react with ammonia, a primary, secondary amine, and end up creating um, amines after reduction. So this is going to go through uh, an imine um, or a enamine. And then once you do the reduction, you can get an amine out of it. Um, in this chapter, we're just gonna introduce some new reducing agents that you can also accomplish this with. 
So if you were to take benzaldehyde and react with ammonia, um, remember that again, your intermediate here, even though I'm not really showing it on the slides, is your amine. And then that can be reduced um, using hydrogen and nickel in order to get to benzylamine. Um, our new reducing agents are sodium cyanoborohydride and lithium cyanoborohydride. Um, these are just kind of milder reducing agents that are able to reduce amines and enamines. So um, we're going to do a practice problem of reductive amination. Uh, this one's kind of tricky because it doesn't kind of, it doesn't exactly look like the normal reductive amination scheme. Um, so go ahead and pause your video and try to work through this on your own. So the first step of this reaction, you have a primary alkyl halide and you have sodium cyanide. So remember that cyanide is a good nucleophile, so it can come in and displace the bromine. And that brings us to compound A, which is a nitrile. Now in the second step, it's adding in a alkyl lithium, alkyl lithiate. So we're taking CH3 minus and attacking the carbon, which pushes electrons up onto the nitrogen. Now this compound is almost an imine. When you add in water, it's going to turn into an imine. Uh, and then the water is going to hydrolyze it and you get to compound B which is this ketone here below. Now then we add in ammonia, which is going to give us our imine again. And then we follow it with lithium cyanoborohydride, and that's going to reduce it to the imine. Our next topic is preparing primary, secondary, and tertiary amines through reduction of other nitrogen-containing functional groups. Um, most of this is pretty analogous to what we were just looking at, though. So uh, you may recall this functional group from several chapters ago, uh, but an oxime can be reduced using sodium and ethanol um, to an amine. Nitriles and anids, you've actually seen those reduced before when we first looked at carboxylic acid derivatives. Um, you can reduce a nitrile using hydrogen gas and nickel. You'll need an excess of hydrogen here um, to get to an amine. Or you can take an amide and introduce uh, lithium aluminum hydride, and you'll just end up removing the carbonyl group entirely. So keeping this in mind, let's look at a short synthesis problem. Uh, if we wanted to go from benzylamine to this N-ethyl benzylamine, we have to get kind of creative. If we were to just add in bromoethane and try to do a reaction, we would likely end up with multiple ethyl groups added on, and that's not our target molecule. So instead, we want to come up with a way that will help us circumvent that problem and get to just the N-ethyl benzylamine. So go ahead and push pause if you would like to work through this on your own. Um, otherwise, I'm just going to keep moving forward. So a really good way to get from benzylamine to N-ethyl benzylamine um, could be to go through the amide. If we could create an amide, we could then reduce it. So the best way to do this would be to add in acetyl chloride and some base in order to get to the amide. So this is a really short synthesis, but this will get us around the whole problem of multiple alkylations and mixed products. Primary amines are very difficult to synthesize through uh, substitution reactions because you are very unlikely to end up with your primary amine target. So the Gabriel synthesis is a way to completely avoid that. 
So this starts with thalamide, which is our first molecule here. And by adding in potassium hydroxide, you're able to deprotonate this proton. giving you an anion, which is then a good nucleophile and can react with an alkyl halide. And then after that reaction has occurred, um, and this being a much less solid nucleophile than just an amine, is not going to undergo multiple alkylations. Um, once that has occurred, you then introduce hydrazine in ethanol reflux and you end up essentially displacing the primary amine. So this is a really cool synthesis because you get exactly the product you're looking for and you don't end up with a mixture of products. So let's do a synthesis practice using the Gabriel amine synthesis. Um, outline a synthesis of 4-methyl pentanamine using the Gabriel synthesis. Go ahead and pause if you would like to work through this on your own. So the first thing we have to do is figure out the structure for methyl pentanamine. So we know that we have five carbons. And it's an amine. And it's four methyl. So one, two, three, four, five, four methyl. So we have our primary amine target. So if we want to synthesize this using the Gabriel synthesis, we're going to have to start with thalamide. And then in our first step, we would want to react with potassium hydroxide to deprotonate thalamide. And then we would want to introduce uh, an alkyl halide that looks like our target molecule. So I'm going to put my favorite halogen on there. And that would bring us to our next intermediate. So there's our intermediate product. And then we would add in hydrazine and reflux in ethanol. And we would end up with our amine Another way to prepare primary amines is to go through the Hoffman rearrangement, which takes an amide and a halogen, molecular bromine, um, in excess of sodium hydroxide and water, and you end up with your primary amine and then a large collection of pretty much innocuous side products. Uh, we're going to go through a couple intermediates here. Um, the, the big ones are we're going to make an isocyanate. And we will also have a carbamate. So in the first step of this reaction, uh, you have to start off by deprotonating the amine. So we have our hydroxide in solution. It's going to deprotonate the amide. So this gives us a negative charge on our amide, which will then react with the bromine in the reaction, giving us an N-bromoamide. So then in this next step, we still have hydroxide. The hydroxide is going to deprotonate the amide again. And then we're going to see a bit of a rearrangement happen here. So the nitrogen is going to form a double bond between it and the carbon, which is going to cause the R group to migrate over to the nitrogen. And at the same time, we'll kick out bromine. So this shows us how the R group ends up on the nitrogen. 
and also kind of shows us how this carbon and oxygen are going to end up on their way out. Uh, so this intermediate <clears throat> is our isocyanate. Uh, in the next step, we have hydroxide. And it comes along and attacks the carbon and pushes the electrons onto the nitrogen. So now we're going to have an intramolecular proton transfer. And <clears throat> from here, uh, this is our carbamate ion, by the way. From here, the oxygen is going to form a double bond between itself and the carbon, which is going to kick out our amine, which is going to pick up a proton from water. And that gives us the amine, but then it also gives us carbon dioxide plus water and base. These things together are going to give us our carbony and the rest of our side products here. So that is the Hoffman rearrangement. Uh, our next rearrangement is the courteous rearrangement. And this one has um, some very similar mechanistic steps once you get through the beginning. So in the beginning, you start with an acyl chloride and you react with sodium azide to give you an acyl azide. Uh, now acyl azides, when they are heated up, are going to rearrange a bit um, because this is going to allow it to liberate nitrogen gas, which will leave the reaction. So that is a very favorable reaction. And we end up at our isocyanate again. Um, at this point, the water in the reaction can attack the carbon, push electrons onto the nitrogen. That's going to give us something very similar to what we saw in our previous reaction. Now if we have an intramolecular proton transfer, you can see how this compound would then decarboxylate um, to give us an amine and carbon dioxide. So this practice problem is just giving you um, some compounds and reagents, so you just kind of have to work through it. So in our first step, we have toluene reacting with potassium permanganate in base and heat, followed by an aqueous acid workup. Um, we have a bunch of benzylic protons, so compound A must be benzoic acid. So then to get from benzoic acid to benzoyl chloride would require thionyl chloride. Now from here, you have some decisions to make. So we have um, an acyl chloride and we're going to end up with an amine and the amine has to somehow end up on the benzene carbon. So we definitely have some sort of rearrangement occurring here. Uh, the best possibility here would probably be to go through a Hoffman rearrangement. So if we added in ammonia, as compound C, that would give us an amide for compound D. which could then be reacted with bromine and hydroxide to give us aniline.